I'd like to call the uh, Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee to order for March 22nd, 2022. Madam Clerk, take the roll. Representatives Cochran, Here. Cooper, Here. Darby, Here. Doggett, Present. Hardaway, Holsey, Here. Hurt, Potts, Here. Reedy, Here. Rudder, Here. Shaw, Todd, Here. Travis, Vital, Wright, Vice Chairman Grills, Here. Chairman Hoffert, Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Clerk. Uh, are there any personal orders this morning? Yes, sir. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I would just like to publicly express my gratitude and, and uh, thanks to uh, Vice Chairman Grills here for the, for the work that he did this morning. Uh, if any of you were out there, you saw such a, a wonderful crowd and, and an enthusiastic crowd. Everybody had a smile on their face. So I would just like to say thank you to Vice Chairman Grills for his hard work in this. Thank you, Chairman Hawford. But uh, I just there's a, several people that are out there that did all this. All I did was use my email address. That's all they did, and they did all the work. And I get all the credit, so they're the ones. And if maybe later on we'll get a chance to recognize them. Uh, Chairman Todd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to recognize your parents, Mr. Jack and Miss Ann Grills, that are here, and uh, your young young daughter as well. So good to have Hadley here. Good to see y'all today. Thank you, Chairman Todd. <laughs> Are there any other uh, personal orders that, or announcements? Um, I'd like to take a privilege. Uh, Ron Parks, a constituent of mine, District 77, he, uh, he's kind of responsible for Kubota tractors in our part of the world in Cypress Creek. Uh, or, was it Cypress Creek, Cypress Point? How do you say it? Cypress Creek, Cypress Creek okay. Outdoors, man, he's, he sells lots of guns, lots of, lots of duck decoys and all. He's just been a... Uh, Entrepreneur, he and his twin brother are entrepreneurs there in our community, and they have done a lot for uh, agriculture community and the hunting and outdoors community. So thank you for being here and for all you've done for our part of the world. Also, Chloe Mead is a constituent of mine. She sits over to my left. She is a uh, Crystal Mead's daughter, which uh, I've known Crystal forever. But it's good to have you today and, and the group that you're with. All right. Anybody else need to? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Tandy. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd also like to welcome Rob Holman. Uh, he's his constituent there in O'Brien County of mine, and uh, just wanted to say welcome. Chairman Reedy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And of course, it's so many of our youth is with us today, and, and as well as yesterday, the 4-H, the FFA, but also I, I want to recognize it's the 2022 Youth Leadership Summit for TEC, especially Mary Weather Lewis Electric Cooperative, MLEC out of Humphreys County, and, and Hayden, uh, uh, or Aiden, if you'd stand, and, and Miss Maddie, if you'd stand as well, let us recognize you for being here for the Leadership Summit. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, uh, Chairman Hoffer, now there's a guy there in Chairman Hoffer's district, Ben, that was there with Chloe. I just, I didn't recognize you. I didn't want to leave you out there, buddy, but thank you for being here today as well. Um, Clay Doggett, down there with... Uh, Thank you, Mr. Honorable Chairman. I have two constituents that snuck in on me that I did not see. I'm not going to make them stand up, but Brian and Morgan Flowers, uh, welcome. They have a fantastic dairy and creamery up in, yeah. in my neck of the woods. So, welcome. Well, um, are there any other recognitions or anything, any other statements anybody wants to make. But if, if not, we'll go on with our today's program. Obviously, this is about uh, Ag Day 2022, and I'm a farmer, so this is kind of more important to me than it is to others, maybe, because this is my livelihood. I'm a ninth-generation farmer there in northwest Tennessee, and I love every minute of it, from a little kid to a 40-year-old man now. I love getting to do what I do, and that's a, that's a blessing. And so many, you know, I know Confucius said, if you find something you enjoy doing, you never have to go to work a day in your life, and I get to do that every day of my life, and I'm grateful for that. But with that, uh, y'all don't hear me talk and ramble, so let's get started with our, uh, the hearing today, and we're going to bring up some uh, different people to testify. I know Johnny Shaw probably has something, somebody he wants to recognize as he comes in. <laughs> He, but everybody loves Mr. Johnny. All right, let's go ahead and get started, and we'll have to go out of order. I mean, not out of order, but we'll have to go out of session. 
to get going here. So first off, we'll have Miss uh, Harrison. Harris, uh, how do you say that, Harrison? Mr. Yes, sir. <laughs> Don't ask us to spell it either. You are recognized. I'll make sure your mic's on. Is that better? Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> First of all, I want to say thank you to all of us for having everyone here in attendance today. Uh, this is my first Ag Day on the Hill, but aside from seeing the governor in the milking contest um, and getting to meet with many of y'all today, uh, it's definitely one that I'll remember. The FFA Creed is a speech that every FFA member knows by heart. The first paragraph goes like this. I believe in the future of agriculture, with a faith born not of words, but of deeds. Achievements won through the present and past generations of agriculturists and the promise of better days through better ways, even as the better things we now enjoy have come to us from the struggles of former years. This first paragraph shows us how FFA members across our state are honored to produce, to influence and produce agriculture to the best of their abilities, from public speaking contests to chapter leadership events and different opportunities across our state and on the local uh, national levels, FFA gives us the opportunity to express ourselves and find our places in agriculture. Just like with me, growing up, I didn't have a traditional agricultural background. I came from the middle of a subdivision in Murfreesboro, Tennessee in Rutherford County and I had no clue what anything was. If you would ask me in middle school, I would have thought that chocolate, er, chocolate milk came from brown cows, uh, and I've come to learn that definitely is not true. My, or my project and my path with agriculture started through my freshman year in high school when I joined FFA. I came from a new school that only had 200 students to a brand new school with over 2,000 and didn't know a single soul in the building. FFA was a second family for me. It allowed me to discover a new passion in my life, become a better public speaker, a better person, and truly develop a passion for service and leadership. Last June, I was elected as a Tennessee FFA state president. Where I've been able to tour uh, our entire state with the rest of my teammates throughout our few months of service. It has not only been a life-changing organization for me, but has led me to understand my path for the future. Right now, I'm a freshman at the University of Tennessee at Martin, where I'm studying agricultural education, where I plan on being an agricultural educator and FFA advisor in the future. FFA has given me so much in this, uh, through this organization, through all of the brilliant people and supporters we've had across our great state, and I want to give back to those. It has allowed me to understand my passion and my dedication for this, for this industry and in agriculture, which is our, our state and our nation's most basic need, to feed each other. We represent the 2% of agriculturists who have to feed the other 98% of, of our national population. Without agriculture, we simply would not exist. I also want to thank you all here today. Without your generous support and uh, many hours uh, le legislating for bills that help us as agriculturists, we would not have organizations such as FFA or 4-H that allow us to um, experience agriculture in the classroom. So for, thank you all. I really appreciate everything you all do for us. And I look forward to see what you all do in the future. Thank you, Harrison. <clears throat> does, does anybody have any questions for Harrison? He may want to answer. Or if not. Miss uh, Barbara Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Who taught you how to do the speaking? <laughs> uh, that would definitely be my advisors, Miss Gina Stewart and Miss Amy Alt. They were they were big supporters or big uh, advocates for myself. So you are taking communications. Yes, ma'am. Okay, <laughs> very good presentation. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Are there any other questions? Thank you, Harrison, for being here and participating today. And uh, and obviously, you hang around for a little while. Maybe eat lunch with us. I hope. Yes, sir. All right. Um, we're going to go off script just for a second. Uh, Congressman Rose just come in here, and I'm going to put you on the spot. Any politician's got something to say right off the bat, I'm sure. So we'll recognize Congressman Rose, and uh, just to make a few brief remarks, if you don't mind. Thank you for sliding in here on us. Notice she said brief. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, Vice Chairman Grills and, and Chairman Halford uh, and members of the committee, it's a privilege to be here today and to address this committee and want to thank you for uh, what you all do uh, every day to uh, represent Tennessee agriculture and promote Tennessee agriculture uh, and spe uh, specifically uh, commend you for this a day and uh, honoring our farmers and, and our agricultural industry. Uh, as many of you know, I'm a farmer 
and, uh, and the proud, uh, uh, I guess, uh, benefactor or, her or uh, recipient of a family legacy that dates back to 1790. Uh, my family has operated the same farmland in Smith County, Tennessee, since uh, John Lancaster and his children arrived there in 1790 to take possession of a Revolutionary War grant. And it's kind of a remarkable thing that the family managed to pass it along through the years. It changed names a few times along the way, but uh, uh, very proud that uh, my wife Chelsea and our two sons, uh, Guy and Sam, are able to keep that going along. I, I say to uh, folks when I talk about that legacy that uh, I have these two sons, one's four and one uh, is just about to turn one year old, and there's no pressure on them. Just a 232-year unbroken legacy that uh, hopefully uh, will convince one of them to continue. So thank you for the chance to address this group, and again, thank you for all that you do. And I hope you know that when it comes to the actions that we take in the U.S. Congress, that uh, when you all have issues that you uh, would like to see us try to address, I hope you'll feel free to keep my name in mind and contact me. And again, I commend you for the work that you do. Thanks for the opportunity to address the group today. Thank you, Congressman Rose. <laughs> I'm scared to open it up to questions because we're going to ask you for all these things we want from the federal government. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, do anybody have anything they want to say real quick? Thank you, Congressman, for Thank being you. here. And also, yes. And, I, and publicly, I want to thank you for the values you stand for, Congressman Rose, because those values are Christian values and Tennessee values, and we need more of that in this nation. Uh, next on our list, we have Jim Jenkins, 4-H. Yes, sir, you have, you're recognized. Thank you. Good morning. Um, like Harrison said, uh, this, is, this is actually my second Ag Day on the Hill, but my first time actually in here in the subcommittee hearing, and it's, it's, um, it's definitely great to be here, um, obviously, Missed, missed a few years, missed, uh, I think, uh, the last Ag Day on the Hill was 2019, if I'm not wrong. Um, definitely great to be back um, and great to represent um, two very great organizations um, in 4-H uh, and FFA. Um, but without further ado, um, my name is Jim Jenkins. Um, I'm from Hawkins County, and I'm currently serving as the 2021-2022 uh, Tennessee 4-H State Council President. <clears throat> in Hawkins County, my family and I raise black Angus beef cattle and grow a garden every year. Um, I've been a very active 4-H'er in Hawkins County in the Forestry, Wildlife, and Fisheries Project area, um, as well as the Leadership Project area. Um, I started 4-H just like most of every other 4-H'er across the state in the fourth grade. Um, I entered bread baking competitions, I entered speech contests, and I entered uh, canned goods into my local fair. Uh, I continued my 4-H career through high school, and my freshman year I was selected as a state finalist in the Forestry, Wildlife, and Fisheries Project area. Um, we competed at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville's campus, where although I did not win that week, I did come home with a new value and love for 4-H and agriculture that has always been instilled with me um, growing up on a farm and being a multi-generation farmer in East Tennessee. 4-H is a place where the youth can come to talk about their grand champion show animal that they've been working with since they were small children in the high school and where they can really enjoy and see the virtues that agriculture has installed in them and where it will take them in life. 4-H does not look at whether or not you have an ag background. It looks at where it can take you and what it can lead you to be. And as many of you know, and hopefully we've had some 4-Hers in your office this week, Tennessee 4-H Congress is going on this week, and that's where we'll come in. We'll do a little mock session of the General Assembly. And two years ago in 2020, I decided that I was going to run for Speaker of the House and get myself my very own green blazer like you see today and like you see behind me. Now, obviously, that election was virtual, that being the COVID year. And I think I speak for everyone in this room whenever I say that, thank God we don't have to wear any more masks. Thank you. But eventually, I did get to stand in front of my peers and lead that mock General Assembly. And I got to hear and we got to discuss and vote on bills that aren't unlike the ones that you see in front of you every single day. And we get a glimpse into how hard that can be for you to represent the entire state of Tennessee and the communities that you come from as farmers and what the values you hold back home are. Congress has always been a special event for me, but it's the virtues that you all have and it's the support of agriculture and 4-H that is so commendable. Because without you and without 4-H and FFA that you see behind me, our 
society in Tennessee would collapse. Agriculture has always and will always be a cornerstone in Tennessee society that we should hold up even more today. So on behalf of over 150,000 4-Hers across the state, I wanted to thank you for your continued support of 4-H and agriculture. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Do we have any questions? For Chairman Ty. I just have one question. As you were presiding over the chamber, was everybody kind of in their place and staying in their seats and doing their, their work? Well, I've, I've actually served as a page before, and I can say that uh, we had some, uh, I want to say a little bit more of attentive sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I just wondered how similar it was to what we'd experienced. Ms. Cooper? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I would be remiss. I got myself in trouble by speaking before, but thanks. I enjoyed your presentation, very good presentation, and thanks for being involved in agriculture. Yes, thank you. Thank All you, right. Mr. Chair. All right, are there any other questions? If not, would you introduce the two people you have with you here? I have, uh, this is my uh, senior representative, Jarrett Tubbs. Please stand up, Jarrett. He's also serving as our state secretary on the state council staff. And also have Maddie Smith, junior representative, with me. And uh, I've got my two parents, Doug and Pam Jenkins, with me. All right. Did well, you like to stand on that? And I've also got my state director, Justin Crow, with me as well. Well. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, for being here. Justin's a, Justin's a fine mentor. You ought to listen to him and about everything he says. He's a good man of character, and he'll help you a lot, I'm sure. All right, next we have Tennessee Farm Bureau Federation President, Mr. Eric Mayberry. I believe a lot of people have seen you around here before. Welcome. Well, it's getting to be in that case. And thank you, Vice Chairman, Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the, of the committee. And I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my, my personal representative, Representative Reedy. Good to hear you and see you today. Appreciate the privilege and the honor to stand in front of you today and talk just a moment about uh, Tennessee Farm Bureau and my life. I'm a, I'm a lifelong farmer from Humphreys County down around the Waverly area, a little community called Hurricane Mills. You know, my wife and I have raised three children down there and we farm beef cattle, uh, row crop uh, corn and soybeans. And about 35 years ago, uh, when we got married, we needed insurance. And so we went to our Farm Bureau agent and uh, we purchased that insurance but then he also talked to us about uh, the fact that all 95 counties have a Farm Bureau office uh, in each county. And they had a board of directors and they advocated for agriculture. And since I was a full-time farmer, he thought that might be something I would be uh, interested in. And after about six months of telling him no, I didn't have time for that, I finally decided to go see what that was all about. And uh, like I say, 35 years later, I stand before you as the ninth president of the Tennessee Farm Bureau Federation. It has been a wonderful experience for my family. Uh, it's been, uh, been great for, to be able to advocate for agriculture. I knew I had that in me some way, but I just didn't have an avenue to do it. I knew farmers were important. I knew agriculture was essential for life and all the things that it brings society. And the Farm Bureau allowed me to do that. And now on behalf of 680 something thousand Tennesseans, that, that are called themselves Farm Bureau members. It's a privilege to lead them. Uh, we just got through celebrating our 100 years of existence, and so we're on year 101, and, and what an honor that is for me and my family to do that. And, and I just want to thank all of you for what you do as a committee and, and as private citizens as well for recognizing agriculture on a day like today, especially National Ag Day and Ag Day on the Hill, but each and every day, we know it's a sacrifice for you to step away from your lives and your businesses and your families to serve in this capacity. And we, we sincerely appreciate that from all of agriculture. And I hope you understand that uh, it's tough for me to stand here with all these folks at my back because that's my family. That's my ag family. And, uh, but it's, uh, I, I'm, I'm a privilege to be a part of that family and uh, I hope to be, be here a few more years to, to serve agriculture in any way I can. Thank you again. Chairman Reed. God, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of course, uh, President Mayberry, it's good to see uh, past President Jeff Aiken with us, Rodonna uh, Rose with us as well. And, and members, there was something special that took place eight years ago when I first ran for office and representing uh, Humphreys County in part of House District 74 was every year we'd meet out the fairgrounds and have an ag leadership breakfast. 
And of course, these folks would show up and we would talk about what's going on in agriculture, not only in Humphreys County, but throughout the state and in the representation from the Farm Bureau office there, and usually our congressman would show up as well as other elected officials. But uh, President Mayberry, it's, it's, it's been an honor to serve the House District 74 and it's exciting to see you move up through the ranks and uh, taking the, the, the reins, if you will, of, of Farm Bureau. And I know with the, certainly we are in good hands. I appreciate you, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you very much. Chairman Holy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, sir, for being here. I just want to tell you, uh, most people don't read mission statements, but Farm Bureau has probably the best mission statement I have ever read. It is both constitutionally based and biblically based, and I just want to tell you, thank you for holding on to those tenets and those principles. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It's my privilege to do that. We'll see no more questions. I want to thank you for being here, and I want to echo what uh, Representative Halsey said about those convictions, those morals, and those uh, those principles that made this country great, and they'll keep this country great if we'll uh, get back to them. But thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you all. I, I'm, so, I, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chairman Albert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I know I'm probably out of order, but uh, I see a gentleman standing back there in the leaned up against the wall. He served on this committee one time and, and served as vice chairman, I believe. Y'all make well some former legislator Andy Holt back there in the back. He's around here enough. We, he's he's always he, leaning up against something. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Next, we have on our list a TCAT representative, Paige Isabel. And I believe that this is the first time that TCAT is presented to the uh, Ag Committee. Uh, and I just think it's a wonderful opportunity. And Governor Lee has put a lot of efforts in the rural Tennessee. And I, here's maybe uh, some fruit of the labor. So I appreciate you being here. Go ahead. You have the mic. Well, like my, Mr. Harrison said earlier, this is my first year here. And I'm really honored to be here today. So without further more, good morning. I'm honored to be here today speaking to y'all about, speaking to you about my program. So my name is Paige Isbell and I'm from Bethel Springs, Tennessee. I'm also a student enrolled in the Farming Operations Technology Program at Tennessee College of Applied Technology Crump, or TCAT Crump. The Farming Operations Technology Program, or FOT for short, was, de was developed to train individuals for high need and high skill careers within the agriculture industry. Students who enroll in the FOT program have the opportunity to earn industry certifications complete a diploma in farming operations technology, and pursue a specialty diploma in either crop production, precision agriculture, livestock management, or the forestry operations. Students have the opportunity to dual enroll in the FOT program, in the FOT program where it is offered in 15 high schools within nine counties. TCAT has partnered, TCAT Crump has partnered with the University of Tennessee at Morton to create the first and only one of its kind articulation agreement where students who complete the FOT program can continue their education at UT Martin with a year of credit hours transferring with them towards their agriculture degree. I don't have to remind you how important agriculture is to Tennessee. You all know this too well. Agriculture was the driving force behind this program and it is an industry that seeks constant growth and change. With the help of Governor Lee's Give Grant, TCAT Crump has been able to enhance and develop the first of its kind FOT program into what it is today. Governor, the support from Governor Lee and you all does not go unnoticed. Thanks to your support of the agriculture industry and career and technical education alike, we at TCAT Crump can receive quality education and training and careers in agriculture right at home. Thank you. <clears throat> Paige, thank you for being here. Who do we have? Uh, Chairman Todd. Thank you, and, and you brought something to light here that uh, one of our guests that's with us today mentioned to me this morning, and that's making the connection between the, the TCATs and, and the technical trades and then a full four-year degree if that's what a person chooses. So I think that's a, that's a really neat thing that you've shared with us, so appreciate you being here and, and uh, letting us know about that. Thank you for having us. Ms. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And you two were excellent. <laughs> thank you. And thanks for being involved in agriculture. I didn't want to say anything when the two young men came up. I was going to ask, where are the young ladies? <laughs> and I didn't want anybody to think that I was sexist. <laughs> so all three of you have done an excellent job, and I take that from being 
a retired teacher of 35 years and four months from Memphis and Shelby County. Thank you for being here and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for being here and for all you do and for representing your, uh, your group so well. Thank you. Uh, next on our list is uh, Representative Darby's, uh, well, I guess he's your old constituent. He's my new constituent now, Rob Holman, as a uh, Young Farmers and Ranchers Chairman for the state of Tennessee. Uh, he's a farmer there in, uh, right outside of Union City, and, and I guess Tandy and I can fight over him. You recognize, <laughs> Rob. All right. Thank you, Rusty, and good morning. I uh, bring greetings to you on behalf of the entire Tennessee Young Farmer and Rancher Organization, and I appreciate you giving me the time to speak to you this morning. I am Rob Homan. I'm your 2022 Young Farmer, Young Farmer and Rancher State Chairman. I come from Obion County, as Rusty and Tanny were just debating on, on who, who owns me, I guess. But uh, I'm a fourth-generation farmer. Uh, my dad and I farm together, grow corn and soybeans on a 175-year century farm. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about young farmers and ranchers and what an impact it makes on uh, Tennessee agriculture. As you know, uh, President Mayberry just finished speaking, and, and if you didn't gather from his speech, uh, I'll tell you Farm Bureau is one of the strongest voices of agriculture in the state of Tennessee. And Tennessee Young Farmers and Ranchers is here to preserve that strength, preserve that voice. And it's an organization uh, for members that are 18 to 35 years old. Uh, he, my wife Nara has done a lot for me, the friendships we have made, the, the connections we make, and uh, the, the, the leadership skills that, that uh, we grow into. It transforms us into those leaders, like you. It transforms us into the future Farm Bureau, the future Ag Committee. We are the future of agriculture. And so there's a few issues on what farmers are facing today. We're facing high fertilizer prices. Uh, the increase in fuel prices, uh, low supply. Uh, of course, right now the market is excellent in the row crops, but that's hardly enough to offset the increase in expenses. That's what Farm Bureau does is we try to fight for, for the farmer, and we try to fight to make sure that we have a, a, and can make a living. And so uh, anyway, no matter the issues, no matter the problems we face, we are a Christian-based organization. I'd be remiss if I don't say we should always remember that God is on the throne, and he always will be. So thank you all again. I appreciate you, everything you do, and I appreciate you making this one of the most ag-friendly states and the most tax-friendly state. Thank you all. I'd also like to recognize that Rob uh, serves on the Obion County Commission. He's been elected up. You're in your second term? Running on the second term. Oh, running on your second term. So the best of wishes, and he's, uh, he does not mind asking the questions and, 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 and rattling the cage a little bit and letting people know that he's there. So I appreciate all your efforts, Rob. All right, last here on our list is Commissioner Hatcher. You get to wrap us up there with our presentations today there, Commissioner. Not exactly proud of you that uh, you cheated to win out there on the milking contest, but uh, but uh, uh, no accusations made or anything. <laughs> hey, good to have you. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Vice Chair, members of the committee, I, I really appreciate this opportunity to address the group and really want to thank you for Ag Day on the Hill. I mean, what a wonderful day to highlight agriculture in a troubled world. And somebody mentioned the smiling faces. I mean, people are really having a good time out there, and that's, and that's good. I do want to recognize uh, my grandson, Hatcher, and my daughter, Jennifer. Uh, the, uh, it, does me, it makes me feel good to see this many young people here, all, all the blue jackets and green jackets, and and because that's, that's the future of the world and the future of agriculture. So thank you for that. And I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Chairman Halford again. And I would, I would uh, tell you that this, he's an example of how you represent yourself and how you conduct yourself. Uh, I think, can I call you Rusty? Yes, sir. Rusty's already mentioned this before, but I mean, I believe it was Rusty. Even when he disagrees with you, he's, he's a good and kind human being. I think it's something that 
it's we're starting to lose in today's world. But I really want to thank you for the, your service and the way you've represented yourself and your community and your state uh, in agriculture, especially. So thank you, sir. Um, how much time do I have? Well, you got a couple Three more minutes. minutes. You got a couple okay. more minutes. Okay. I, w I just wanted, I mentioned this out there, but really in Tennessee, the stars have aligned. We have got a great thing going here. We've got, a, we've got the governor, we've got this legislative body, we've got these committee members, and it's really made, and, and other stakeholders too have come together like I've never seen before in the name of agriculture and forestry, but we have made, I say we, because it's all of us together, record rural investments. Uh, whoops. And I just wanted to, to, to go through a few of these. Uh, $43 million in federal CARES money, the first wave, the best uh, ag and business uh, program, I think, in the United States. Uh, the ag enhancement, a total this time, because we got another bonus from y'all, of $26.25 million allocated with a record number of applicants this last year, 7,700, which is the best producer cost share uh, program in the United States. Uh, the Ag Enterprise Fund, uh, record levels there. We uh, distributed a single year record of almost $8 million in soil conservation projects across, uh, across the state of Tennessee. Uh, $5 million in infrastructure and operational support for the state fair in its move to, to Wilson County Fairgrounds. Uh, rural emergency preparedness and, and response. Uh, TDA allocated a record almost $70 million in emergency food assistance and USDA school food distribution program. The uh, um, record number of deployment by our forestry division for out of state and that, that uh, g gives us revenue and also helps other states and prepares us for, uh, for fires in our own state. Um, let's see. Uh, Chronic wasting uh, disease cap testing capabilities at Cord Lab in support of TWRA and our, our captive uh, uh, wildlife industry as well. Um, the efficient and effective government uh, that we've instituted, uh, we uh, initiated phase one of a $5 million project for a cloud-based platform for our regulatory services and our inspections that we think will help us uh, be more efficient. We're doing a record number of inspections across the board for feed, seed, fertilizer, animal health, uh, all those licenses, and we expect those uh, services to increase. Uh, so what you'll probably be looking at some increased operational costs ask this ne uh, next uh, budget cycle. Um, let's see. But, you know, it's not all a bed of roses because we have, uh, it's been alluded to already, we have some serious supply chain issues. Uh, you can't hardly buy a tractor, a truck, certain parts you can't get. Uh, feed, seed, fertilizer, and herbicides are at record levels. Uh, it's intensified by the war in Ukraine, and it's, it's going to be one of our biggest challenges uh, this year. Uh, the loss of, of high-value ag and forestry land, probably the best thing that's ever happened in West Tennessee is the, is the mega site and the Ford, uh, uh, Ford coming in. We've had uh, whole counties that have had lost population uh, in West Tennessee over three or four decades. Uh, so this, uh, this development is gonna, is gonna bring so many jobs and change the way of life in so many rural communities, but it's gonna bring its own challenges. We're gonna have a real challenge trying to balance how do we, how do we balance that growth and how do we stay, um, how does agriculture and forestry stay the number one in this industry over the next 10 or 15 years? It remains to be seen how we'll address that uh, but it's our goal to try to keep ag and industry uh, number one. So that's just a short list of some of the accomplishments and some of the challenges we, we have, and we look forward to, to working with you all uh, in the coming year. Thank you, Dr. Hatcher, for being here. And also, thank you for always being willing to uh, uh, come up here, testify, you know, have a good conversation, answer any questions. Now, I don't know exactly what Chairman Hoffer's got something there he wants to give you. And I, we're, when he gets down there, we'll recognize him at the podium and let him make a couple of remarks. And then from that point, uh, Chairman Hawford, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I, I think the deck was stacked this morning uh, in the milking contest. We didn't know we, we were up against the professional. I was a ringer. 
You know, we didn't know we didn't know that. I'm, I think I heard you speaking to that cow once, <laughs> whispering in her ear. <laughs> <laughs> she let her milk down and it was just flowing. <laughs> just held the bucket under there. Well, this is not this uh, uh, resolution is not about your prowess as a uh, uh, cow milker, but uh, it's a little bit different than that. And uh, but we wanted to recognize the Department of Agriculture for some things that they have been involved in and, and accomplished. And so, with that, uh, this is res revolution uh, revolution resolution number 751. Uh, it's brought by me and a host of others. So uh, let me just read it to you. A resolution to honor and commend the Tennessee Department of Agriculture upon its exemplary work on the Mississippi River Gulf Coast Watershed Nutrient Task Force. Whereas the Tennessee Department of Agriculture has ably represented the state of Tennessee on the Mississippi River Gulf of Mexico Watershed Nutrient Task Force since that group was founded in 1997. And the task force is a cooperative effort that brings together the 12 states along the Mississippi and Ohio rivers, along with grand land grant universities and stake stakeholders in 12 states and federal pa partners. Whereas, since its formation, the task force has worked with, with purpose and commitment to improve water quality in the Mississippi River, wa Mississippi Ohio River basins, as well as quality of life for communities and residents of those watersheds through voluntary, effective, and innovative programs. Whereas, the Tennessee Department of Agriculture working in collaboration with Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation and local partners have utilized this opportunity to benefit agriculture, conservation, water quality, and the state's watersheds. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives of the 112th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, the Senate concurring, that we honor and commend the Tennessee Department of Agriculture upon its exemplary work representing the state on the Mississippi River Gulf Coast Watershed Nutrient Task Force and thanks for dedicated pro professionals for their ongoing commitment to the health, safety, and welfare of their fel fellow citizens. This is signed by the Speaker of the House, the Speaker of the, of the Senate, Governor Lee, and myself. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, so the, the commissioner gets the blame or the credit for almost everything that happens in agriculture, <laughs> but I can't take much credit for that. That, that really is, it said it in here, that's a collaboration with primarily West Tennessee farmers, TDEC, John McClurkin's shop, and they have been on it for the past several years and, and um, uh, re done a really good job. So thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Chairman Todd. Uh, you, uh, Commissioner, you mentioned a few minutes ago uh, several things in uh, what you were presenting. One was the uh, State Fair, and so I just wanted to recognize folks from the State Fair that are here, and I don't know if you can identify, uh, if they raise their hand or stand up. Yeah. We appreciate what Randall you Clemens do. and Jimmy. Wonderful. Oh, Thank you all for being here. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hatcher, for being here. I also want to recognize that the governor has a proclamation today uh, that he signed uh, recognizing today as the Ag Day, uh, official Ag Day on the Hill, March 22nd. So Governor Lee, and you know, he's a, he's a governor that that's understands what it's like to drive a tractor, change the oil, put a set of brakes on, fix, uh, fix a hydraulic hose. He understands that. So we are very fortunate to have a governor that can, knows what we have to go through on a, on a daily basis. That was the last speaker we have. Uh, but... Chairman, I mean, uh, Dr. Hatcher mentioned uh, Chairman Hoffer. Obviously, y'all know he's not running for re-election. And I said a few things out on the on the, uh, the plaza about how he's such a gentleman amongst gentlemen. He's an honorable individual, and we love him dearly. We uh, There's not a person up here that since I've been here for three years that has, has said a negative word about Curtis Hoffer to me, nor have I heard anybody else repeat anything that someone else has said about him that was negative. And that's, that's a testament to a man's character. He's been good to a lot of us, and we, we're going to miss him. But some of us on the Ag Committee have gotten together, all of us on the Ag Committee have gotten together, and got you a gift, a departing gift, Chairman Hawford. Clay Doggett worked it out for us to get, to, to get this for you, to let you know how much we appreciate you and love you. Thank you. Goodness. Those of us 
suit, doesn't it? <laughs> well, we figured when you retired, you're going to need something to hold your pants up. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Hall, for thank you, Representative Doggett, for getting that, uh, facilitating that, and making sure we got it. Uh, Chairman Ty, and I just want to echo what you said a moment ago about uh, the attributes of Chairman Hallford, and he has certainly been a, a mentor to me here, and to uh, have an adjoining district with me back in West Tennessee uh, has meant a lot. We get to, to see each other quite often back at home, and and then to serve on this committee with him, and for him to. Uh, shepherd me through becoming a chairman and and uh, leading the subcommittee. I, I just can't say enough uh, appreciation to you, sir. Thank you. We will be missing you. <laughs> chairman Doggett, did you have your hand up? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Way back. All right. Well, I, before we leave, I want to thank a few folks. I want to thank Shelby Benoy. Where are you at? This girl right here, she put, I mean, she, she and, where's Kyle at, my assistant? He's not here. He's upstairs working on something. Those two work so hard to get everything together. And I don't want to just blame them for everything or give them all the credit because there's a few others. I, I say blame. I'm used to getting blamed for things. <laughs> I do it. But there's a lot of folks that were participants in this. That's Phyllis Ferguson, Melinda Perkins, Carol McDonald, Andy Holt, Lee Maddox, Amy Beckham, Jimmy Ogilvie, Martha Gentry, and Tanner Poss. All of y'all, they, all these folks work so hard to make today take place and the different things that have gone on behind the scenes. Just give them a round of applause if you don't mind. <laughs> and also Kenny Crossan with the facilities management team, they did a phenomenal job of making sure everything took, uh, you know, went without a hitch. And, and thank God for the rain that it was, it held off. Um, I don't know that we have any other business, but I do want to say just a couple things about the American farmer. And the American farmer is one of the toughest, most resilient contributors to our economy. And here on our homeland, we have the safest, least expensive, and best of food supply in the world. And although fertilized prices have tripled, fuel prices have doubled, parts for equipment are scarce, and inflation is on the rise, Tennessee producers stand ready to make another crop with a willing, optimistic attitude, hoping and believing that 2022 will be the most successful year yet. So thank a farmer, hug a farmer, love a farmer, and when you get a chance, buy a farmer's lunch. If you need one, I'm available. <laughs> we were, we're fixing to go upstairs and have lunch as soon as we get out of here, but we don't want to go upstairs and have lunch without blessing it. So my friend, uh, Chairman Cochran, if you would, bless the lunch and then we'll uh, uh, go back into session, take a picture, and dismiss. If you'll bow with me. <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you, God, for, for allowing us to, to gather here today, God. We ask you, Lord, just to, to be with us, Lord, as, as, we, as we go out and we do your work, Lord. We ask you, God, uh, to continue to bless the great state of Tennessee, Lord, and we thank you for your blessings on this great state. We thank you, Lord, for the farmers, those that you have chosen to be the stewards over your land. Dear, dear Jesus, God, just bless us as we go out. Bless this food, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, we'll go back into session without objection. We're back into session. Do we have any further business? Seeing none, we have a motion to adjourn. All in favor? We are adjourned. Hey, Lee wants to get a, Lee wants to get a picture of everyone. I, Okay. If you spoke, if you spoke, please come to the front. <laughs>